Hard to believe it's already year four that we're heading into, um, but there's so much excitement here with not just in our program and in our team, just at our university. Um, it's just been a phenomenal fit for, for myself, for our staff, for our team. Um, we love the city, love being part of the state, um, and couldn't be more proud of the women that have graduated from our program, that continue to give back, and yet I'm really, really excited about our program and where we're heading. Coach, uh, you had to get three of your top four scorers back. Outside of that, though, from a production standpoint, there's going to be some new faces. Who should we look for, and, and is depth a concern? You know, I think everything's a concern when you're young, but that's that's had been our comfort zone in the last couple of years, to be honest with you. I feel that we have so much experience in our junior class that we haven't had, so you cannot you cannot put a price on that. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like we should be able to be a veteran team right now, and we're not. We're still going to be relying on a lot of young players. So. You know, we just talked as a staff that Maddie Dean, we have such high expectations for her because she had such a great year, and she's a sophomore. You know, and, and obviously losing Becca Jonas was a big blow for us, but her leadership has been just phenomenal. So really excited about that part. Our new faces, obviously the one that everyone knows is Nicole Miller. Um, she's going to have to, she's going to have to play, and she's going to have to play through some things, and we're excited about that. I mean, she's no stranger to Drake. She's a Drake Relays champion. She's a state track champion. She went down to Wells Fargo, willed her team, so she's a winner. Um, and that's how our that's how our freshman class is. Sammy Backroad is going to do some great things. And then obviously on the interior, Emma Donahue, who's a senior for us, who hasn't had a lot of experience, is also going to step up and do some pretty amazing things. How does the schedule blend itself to that? And what I mean by is you look at it, you open with Iowa State, that's right. obviously going to be easy. It's at Wisconsin, North right. Dakota, I know, Creighton. That's a pretty loaded schedule for, yeah. for new rules and a, and a team that you guys have. It is. It is. It is completely. And you know what? That's where we have to see as a program where we're at. That's how we want to schedule because one of the things that we want to do is we want to get fans that come here and watch our team play. We got to see where we're at. You know, we're going to bring some really good teams into our NAP Center. I love the fact that we still all four Division One schools in Iowa play each other. It's really important. You know, it's it, it's extremely important. We have a noon game where we always want to play an Iowa team as well to be able to bring people here. So those are really important things for us. But our schedule is really, really tough. And we planned it and thinking we were going to have some different pieces that we don't have. And you know what? We're going to have to adjust. Jenny, out of all the rule changes, there's several you can talk about. What's going to be the biggest adjustments out of all those different rule changes? You know, I think the quarters are going to be adjustments. I think the timeouts are going to be adjustments. I think the media timeouts are going to probably be the biggest adjustment because, you know, you're supposed to have a media timeout at the five minute mark, but if there's a timeout called in the first minute of the game, you no longer have a media timeout. So now they're playing, you know, you're used to playing four minute segments and rarely did you get to the four minute segments and now you could be playing essentially nine and a half minute segments. I mean, to be honest, that's, that's going to be tough. So there comes your question of depth. So we're going to have to change up some things of how we look and how we've played. Um, and yet what I really like though, is the way that Caitlin Engel, who's who's a ver who's a veteran point guard, knows how to manage the game, knows how to manage the end of the half. I mean, you know as well as anybody, we don't use a lot of our timeouts because our players do know how to manage those end of end of the half situations. So now we have three of those that they know how to manage before the end of the game. Uh, coach, you've only practiced for a few days so far, mm -hmm. but how's the process gone of replacing Becca Jonas in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you really ever can replace something like that with another player just like her. I mean, if, if we are, we're sitting really good, and we're not, um, but we're going to have to be creative. You know, some of our guards are going to get more playing time, and we're going to have to look a little bit different on defense. We're going to have, like I said, Emma Donahue is going to have an opportunity to really step up and be called upon. And you know what? You never know when the lights go on and you're a senior, you never know when you're needed and your team needs you. The thing I love about our chemistry, I love our culture, those are the things, that's how people can do that. That's how people can shine because it's not a one-person show. Um, just to make sure, Becca on course probably to be back for next year. Next Maybe year. Yep, she'll red, yep, 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 she'll be able to red shirt. And then uh, also, what about as far as, you guys are still seen as a contender in the Valley. Last year, you probably surprised some people. This year, you come in a little bit mm -hmm. with people seeing you, Missouri State, which is always mm -hmm. there, you and I. Does that change, or have you noticed a vibe on your team different? You're not surprising people maybe this year? 
No, I don't think so. But I think the fact is, is that since we've gotten here, that's the kind of standard that we want to have. And so we've talked about that. I mean, you know as well as I do, if four years ago, would you have said that we could have been picked for first in our league this year? And you're looking at me and you're saying there's no way we could have, you know? And so I think that we're doing some things to be able to do that. But you have to be prepared to be able to do that. Now, we don't know how to win at the end, okay? But we're going to have to figure it out. And so and the, the yeah, at, and I mean at the end, and we, we haven't won a conference championship. You know, we played for one, and you know what? That was a hard weekend for us. It really was. But that also has really driven us into the into our postseason and into our preseason, and now we're heading into this season. I'm going with that in the schedule, you get the double back to backs with Wichita State and Missouri yeah. State again. You look forward to that, though. Based on some of the things that happened last year, do you almost say, yeah, but like you just said, we have to deal with it. So do you almost look forward to those kind of challenges? You know, I think every game you look on our schedule and you could circle it. I mean, to be honest, you could circle every road trip. You could circle every home game. I mean, that's just how that's how we've prepared our schedule. We're trying to prepare our schedule so that every game you have to focus like that because the reality is, is when you do have a charter in your back, you're getting circled too. So if we're not circling people, that's a problem. Lizzie has such a great year, but what are you asking? Where are you asking her to improve to be better? You know, there's actually a lot of areas for Lizzie to continue to improve, and when you have a over 1,200 point scorer as a sophomore saying that is is kind of crazy in itself. But the way that she's practiced, the way that she practiced, you know, with our rules being different and and being able to work out in the summer more, and our rules are different in this, you know, in the fall and all that. And so, so although it has only been a couple of practices that we've officially had, we've had plenty of workouts. But her leadership on court, she's playing at a different level in practice. That's what we need from her. Caitlin's doing the same thing, and you know, Courtney Rush sometimes gets a little overshadowed too because she had some injuries last year. But let's not forget, in her freshman year, she took NIAC to the national championship. I mean, they were a contender for a national championship. So we do have a lot of experience in that junior class. Uh, what's the story on Courtney Rush? Last year she was hurt a little bit? Yeah, so she, she ended up starting for us for a few games, and then she got hurt um, right before uh, the holiday. and. Um, you know, it took her a little bit to get back. I mean, she was out, I think, six to eight weeks or something like that, and then kind of had to shake the rust off right at the end of the season. So she's healthy again, so that helps us. Um, I love what she can bring in terms of being a blue-collar Iowa kid. I mean, she just is. That's part of how our, our roster is transformed. We're getting Iowa players. Young Iowa players are wanting to come to Drake. I love that. I love that we can do that because we want to sell this place out. We want people to be Drake fans, and that's going to be a huge part of how we do it. Is this team good enough, in your opinion, to make an NCAA tournament uh, appearance, and, and what's it going to take for that to become a reality? You know, in my opinion, I think we can do anything. I really do. But the cards have to, I mean, you have to, you have to hit the jackpot a little bit in, in some of your luck, too. We've got to stay healthy. We've got, we've got to be able to prove that we do have some depth. We've got to figure out what that depth looks like. Um, and you know what? It, you can ask me after we're done with our non-conference. I mean, really, because how we contend in our non-conference is really going to tell me how we're going to, def how we're going to be able to go through our conference season. Do you, uh, one thing you guys have established that identity uh, pace up and down. Mm -hmm. you, with the questions of depth, can you are you still gonna hit the court running like always? Does that change at all? Are you still gonna play the same pace? I yeah, we are. I mean we like that. That's where we're comfortable. That's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to make sure every player on our team has a green light. They know that. They know our system. Our system continues to evolve, but it's the same system that we've started with. Um, so that is our identity. That's who we are. So the one thing that's nice you know, when you lose such a key player, and we had this happen last year, the whole system doesn't fold because you lose one piece. It may look a little bit different because different people have different skills, but the system we have in place is the system we have in place, and the players that are coming in here love to play in it, and I really think that our fans like to watch it. Back to the rule changes, how do you think they'll affect the game? You know, I hope in a really positive way. I hope that it, it becomes a big entertainment um, there's going to be more music involved. There's going to be an atmosphere involved. Um, you know, the, the big reason is that 
We've got to change the game so people want to play it. They want to come and they want to watch it. They want to grow up and they want to play it. You know, that's where you look at our team. And that's where, you know, if you look talent for talent, you know, you could look on paper and say, okay, we score points, we do that. But if you did an eye test or you came in and you matched us up against somebody else who's supposed to do this or who's supposed to do that, we don't win those matches. We win because we have fun playing. We love playing. We like to shoot the ball. We like to make the extra pass. And we like to defend as a team. Those are the things that we like to do. That's in our comfort zone. So to me, that fits the new rules. It completely 100% fits the new rules. Jenny, I know practice has just started, but you mentioned you had a whole summer of workouts. Is there any one surprise or two surprises that maybe have come to mind over that period of time? You know, I don't know about surprises. I think, you know, I, I like where our freshmen are. I think Sammy Backroot's going to do some really big things for us. She's just, um, just plays really, really hard. She's one of our, gar our freshman guards from Wichita. I really like how she's playing right now. Um, you know, Paige Griner has grown a lot over the last year and in the summer. Um, and Emma Donahue, to be honest with you, has really stepped up and done some really nice things for us. We're really going to look to her this year, not just because she's a senior and because we have a vacancy, but because she has a different hunger level. Looking way ahead, what are your thoughts on uh, the Valley Tournament now being at Quad City? It's a little bit closer. Awesome. I know you didn't get to finish your question there, but it's awesome. I mean, it's unbelievable. We are so thrilled to have it in the Quad Cities. And yes, because our fans can travel and they do travel and it's going to be a great environment for us, but I also think it's so incredible for our conference. The Quad Cities, they're, um, I mean, they have completely embraced what it is that we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it. They're selling tickets. Um, they're just so involved and they want us there. And I think that just that alone is awesome. How empty did it feel in uh, the previous years there? You know, the tournament. I don't know if it was, yeah, and I don't know if it was this, that it felt so empty, um, but this is going to feel like home, partially because it's, it's pretty close to our home, you know, and we have great fans that travel, and, you know, it, it felt empty because of the way that maybe we played in last year, um, but we've had some pretty fun wins there, too, and so it's, it's hard to change your home, but I couldn't be more excited that it's in the Quad Cities for us to call that home now because they're calling us home, too. During practice, what are some of the songs that the players, the cool kids, listen to these days? Yeah, usually those get changed when I walk in the gym, <laughs> ironically. Um, no, you know, honestly, we, we, do, we do change a little bit because we've got to play with music now. I mean, the rules, you know, you talk about the rules, honestly. And, and there can be music being played in, during dead balls. I mean, that's a new change. That's a legitimate change. That's one of the rules. So you talk about environment. So we've got to be able to have a lot of different distractions. So we use music. Um, I don't ever get asked to be the DJ, which is unfortunate, because otherwise it'd be rocking. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so that's actually very legitimate. So I, I didn't mean to ask a legitimate question, but it yeah. kind of turned into that. That's cool. And um, mm -hmm. so, like during it, during like ball goes out of bounds, I'll put on music for like five seconds and then take it off, and then uh -huh. like so just little quick spurts uh -huh. of music. Uh huh. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So it'll be a much more <laughs> fan interaction, much more entertainment. So, yeah. So it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how you know, and it's all it, everybody's going to be learning, but it's it's more similar to WNBA's to NBA's those kind of environments. So are you actually going to play more music and stuff during practice? Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. 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 We'll see. I mean, <laughs> you know, but but we have been trying to where it's you know if you call you know if you have a water bake break quick it's like okay the music's going to come on and then you got to refocus again or during dead balls it's got to come on and then you got to refocus again I think it's also generational though too I mean that's where you know sometimes we don't I don't even know if it's generational it's just people in general but you kind of your mind wanders and then you got to be able to get it back so once that stop that song stops you got to be able to get it back you're not going to have any influence on the playlist at all we'll see <laughs> I'll let you know I'll let you know which ones are mine any other uh, questions for Coach? So people that are coming here, you said you want more, more fans here. What are they going to see if they've never been to a great women's game? I mean, what, what are they going to look for? What are they? Yeah, doing? yeah, good question. You know, I think one of the biggest things that you're going to see when you come watch our team play is you're watching fundamentals, you're watching a team play, you're watching an up-tempo style 
Um, that's what we do. I know it may look frantic at times. That's not necessarily what we want it to look like. It's very, it is controlled. Um, and at the same time, you're going to be able to see women that just love playing basketball. They love playing together. They love what they represent in Drake University. They love this community. I mean, after every game, they go up in the stands and they thank them to come. Um, it's really important that we really embrace what we're doing. And I think you get to see a product that's entertaining. It's not, you know, we're not going to win every single game that we play, but we are going to play our best and we are going to compete to win in every single game that we play.